What's up everybody and good afternoon. Welcome back to my Photography 101 Live on Red35 Photography. Yes, welcome to my YouTube channel and thank you for joining me. Today we have a rather interesting topic because, uh, right, okay, there's quite debatable because I saw some uh, negative comments and also very much of all many, many positive comments uh, from the community post that I, uh, I created yesterday asking you guys which one is your, uh, well, which camera you already have or which one you plan to buy. So um, good morning, Paul. Let's say some hi for people first. And get, hello, Paul. Right, I'm gonna get more people flowing through because I know I just started the live stream. Uh, just before I start, just want to uh, kind of break the bad news. Uh, I was supposed to go outside and do a uh, the live stream from outside in the garden because I wanted to enjoy a little bit of the fresh air, but the weather is not on my side and uh, it's starting to drizzle a little bit. So I probably won't be able to do the live stream outside. I was gonna take my wireless system out there and show you all the gorgeous cameras I have in my collections. And then we're gonna talk through, you know, the entire list that I created yesterday. So uh, anyway, so I'll say hi to some people first. Hi, Paul. Hi, Romain. Hi, Craig. Hi, Rob. Hi, Gareth. And wow, excellent. Hi, Holgatron. <laughs> okay, awesome stuff. Well, thank you for, uh, Thank you for coming in. Uh, so as you can see that I have a lot of things set up here. We can see my wireless transmitter here. This is what I was just uh, telling you about. The, uh, the, uh, my original plan was to go outside and do the live stream out there instead of sitting out here in, in the dining room here, having my artificial light, having this non-circulated air, you know, kind of suffocating me. Uh, but other than that, you know, and I'm gonna continue the live stream, of course, and I'm, nothing's gonna stop me doing that. So I have to bring all my camera from outside to inside. So I lay them all out now on my table. So I'm gonna go through one by one. And of course, I'm gonna announce which one is the most popular, uh, you know, uh, a camera, all from you guys. You know, it's all, it's all your, uh, uh, from your votes that uh, you, uh, you, uh, I put in in my community post, so that's all good. Hello, Marie. Hello, Stuart. Hello, Bernard. Hello, Jen. Hello, Zico. Photo from Amsterdam. <laughs> Hello, Jan. Hello, Jan from Denmark. Excellent stuff. Well, thank you for joining me, uh, Lee. Yes. Well, I'm going to keep saying hello to people because I always like to see hi. For, you know, it's, it's a polite way to start the live stream, right? Just to uh, to keep saying hi to people who are joining the live stream. So of course I cannot say hi to every single one of you. I know that the more people, more people will be joining in later on, but uh, let's get crack on with our today's topic, right? Okay, let's start with it now, because um, if you guys missed my uh, community post yesterday, I asked, uh, you know, I actually created a list of nine cameras in my post, separate into two posts, uh, asking you go which one uh, you currently own or which one you're planning to buy. So, you know, you kind of give me a gauge of what is the most popular uh, current, I mean current, yeah, um, uh, 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 Olympus camera that's currently on sale in the lineup. Oh, okay. Oh, hello, Rockford shoot photo. Hi, Moses. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> from Crazy NYC. My man, I know, I feel you, man. I know, and uh, I heard about all the NYC stuff and uh, I feel for you guys, mate. Uh, I really hope that, you know, things gonna calm down very, very soon. And, uh, you know, my love to all of you guys, you know, and uh, yeah, really, really bro. Okay, let's crack, crack, crack on, right. Okay, I don't wanna waste too much time here because uh, we got a lot to talk through. And of course, you know, you're welcome to share your experience. And also if you haven't joined in the poll, you are very welcome to uh, uh, join in here. Leave me some comment as I speak about each of the cameras uh, on the list. And then we can go from there because it's gonna be a fun discussion. I really like to interact with everybody. And of course, you can also have your own discussions there. And if I see some comments that is kind of interesting popping out there, I will bring it in as well as a conversation. Okay. Great stuff, and uh, I shall start the conversation now. Right, let me just bring up today's topic, which is your most memorable camera, or uh, actually, no, this is not, the po most popular. Let me just change the topic now, because uh, obviously this is, uh, I think it's last week, I haven't changed it. How dare me, you know, most popular camera. Right, okay, <laughs> right, I, I, um, over 600 people voted yesterday, or since yesterday, and uh, I have accumulated uh, all, the, all the votes and then created a graph so I can show you exactly what I mean. Um, even though the text may be a little bit small, but I'll show, show you that right now. And uh, let me just close this off here so you can see exactly what I'm saying. Right, 
I don't know whether you can you guys can see it okay. Um, hello Samson from Hong Kong. Hello David from Virginia. Hello John from South Africa, and hello from Russia. Zimagorek. Zimagorek. Am I am I am I pronouncing your name correctly? Okay. Um, so this is the chart. It's very hard to see, but I can go through from the top to the bottom for you guys. Basically, from uh, it's actually uh, arranged in pricing terms. So like the, the top is the uh, Olympus EM1X and then EM1 Mark III, EM1 Mark II, EM5 Mark III, EM5 Mark II, uh, EM10 Mark III, EM10 Mark II, the Pen F, then, then the EPL 9 and 10, and finally is the Olympus TG6. Right, that's a mouthful, right? Okay, <laughs> okay, so, um, so oh, you can see the chart here. You know, I know it's a little bit hard to see, and uh, uh, but uh, I can tell you the exact percentage because I, I can read it all out for you because I have uh, compiled a data chart here to show exactly what it is. So out of the uh, the the nine cameras that I put it on the post, the one that came the highest is Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. Right. It's not surprisingly, simply because first of all, it's a truly fantastic camera. I bet all of you guys will agree in terms of feature, build quality, uh, uh, you know, uh, versatility, ruggedness, you know, it, it's one hell of a camera. And it's still as current as ever, ever since they got the, uh, the firmware 3 update from last year. Uh, so this is absolutely no surprise to me. And that is the most popular. It's accounted for 19, percent of your vote yeah and that is very high it may sound not a lot but because it's quite surprisingly though is it's fairly even that's why you know 19 percent actually is the majority here okay and then uh, the second most popular is it is the pen f of course let's give it a round of applause <laughs> yes it is the uh, uh, the olympus pen f and yes Again, is not surprised at all because uh, I know there's a cult following about, uh, about the Pen F uh, uh, a camera. It's, it's truly is stunning to look at, but also a great photographic tool, which I'm going to come into it later on. And then third place is, listen to that, and I'm not surprised either because I have heard it again and again and again from the comments that are uh, being sent to me uh, on, on some of my YouTube uh, videos. It is the Olympus OMD EM10 Mark II, not Mark III, it's actually Mark II. So this is the first place, second place, and third place. So uh, what do you guys think about the, uh, the, the popularity contest? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I have to say that, you know, of course, uh, cameras like the uh, EM1 Mark III um, that is not making to the top three because it just recently announced and, uh, and people only starting to get their hands on the camera as of March. Uh, so there's only a two months gap there. But even though within that time, it came up to 12 percent, you know, that, that is actually not bad. I could see the next year or so. Uh, people either going to be upgrading from Mark II to Mark III or just buying Mark III in general. And then as the percentage should overtake Mark II uh, in, the, in the next 9 to 12, uh, 12 months. So this is going to be a, a very interesting. Um, Mr. Hogatron. And uh, if I'm going to show you this scene here, right. Okay, let me just close up this graph first. And uh, it's going to be annoying because uh, it's going to obstruct my, my, my view a little bit. Right, I do have my wireless system set up here. So yes, I have my wireless system, which is supposed to be for outside when I'm going outside. It's, it's starting drizzling now. So lucky I'm actually indoor, not outside. Otherwise, all my camera gears would be wet. Not that I worry too much about it, but I don't want to get wet myself. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to switch on to my live cam and then uh, just to show you exactly what I have on my table right here. So ready guys? So there you go. So you can see that this is, oh, hang on, it's flipped. Let me just unflip it. Right, okay. So, uh, so you can see that I have my EM1 uh, Mark III, oops, and then uh, I have the uh, EM1 Mark II, I have the Pen F, I have the uh, the EM5 Mark II. I have the EM10 Mark III. I have the EPL9 Blue Edition, and of course the one that's filming right now it is the EM1X. And then of course 
the one that the one that I'm uh, <laughs> I'm using is also my uh, EM1 Mark III. So I have two EM1 Mark III here, and uh, uh, I do use them for work. And the other are simply my just my collections. Uh, you can call me a Olympus fanatic or a nut. Uh, whatever you want to call me is perfectly fine because I admit it and I don't want to deny it. And this is my love to Olympus. And mind you though, uh, this only happens as uh, not so long ago. You know, I only started this about 2016 when I switched from Canon to Olympus. Uh, before that, the only camera I have with Olympus was this guy here, uh, the Olympus EM5 Mark II. And this was the only Olympus camera I had in my collection. So over the last three, four years, and uh, yeah, my collection has grew from one camera to how many now? Uh, six, seven, eight, eight, nine cameras. Oh, I do forgot. I do have the EM5 Mark III, which I didn't show earlier. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it's probably a little bit sad and uh, to to see all that camera in front of me. Um, but anyway, it's all good. Hopefully, you have some coffee ready because uh, we're gonna spend some time talking about each of the cameras. And hopefully, if you haven't got one of these cameras yet, uh, I'll give you some pointers. You can ask me any question you are uh, you would like to know about any of these cameras, and I will hopefully give you some uh, purchase. Uh, um, uh, suggestions, you know, if you are thinking about doing certain things and uh, or any questions in general about any of this camera, I can see that I have them, that means I know how to use them. Uh, so you're very welcome to ask me anything. So let me have a sip of my coffee first. Mm. It's black coffee because I need it. I know that I'm going to fall asleep. And uh, the, the day is so dull compared to the last three weeks, you know, we had super sunny days. It's almost like a, a perfect summer. Uh, suddenly today it's all gone. The, the sun is disappeared from the cloud and uh, it's starting to get a little bit wet now. Hello, uh, Ricky from Holland Park. Oh, you're lucky. You're in Holland Park. Gosh, man, I wish I'm there now. Um, the, <laughs> the YouTuber that influenced me to finally come to this uh, the, was Rob Trey and oddly Tony Northrup because he actually praised and owned that camera. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Oh no. Well, you you heard about Tony. He just recently talked about the death again about Michael Fourthert, and uh, uh, you know, this is him. He really, he really doesn't believe in Michael Fourthert anymore. And uh, well, that's that's him. And so does a lot of the YouTubers. They seem to hate Michael Fourthert. Oh, they all. I would put it like this. They just hate anything outside of full frame. <laughs> Which is actually, uh, uh, like I mentioned, you know, I, uh, I hate to, or I, I feel disgusted to, to talk about other camera manufacturers and also uh, other formats. I think we all have uh, uh, different uh, uh, priorities and different rights for, uh, so each format should have their own place in the market, right? And I don't think that, you know, like full frame is the best. I don't think Michael Forster is the best for that matter. Uh, so is Michael, uh, uh, a medium format, APS-C. I think they all have their own advantage and disadvantage. And that's solely depending on what sort of uh, photography uh, or jobs that you do. Uh, and I, for me, you know, I'm I'm super happy with Michael Forth. Otherwise, it wouldn't be, you know, shooting exclusively with, with Olympus. Now, I still have my bloody ten thousand pound Leica. I I just don't use it anymore. Apart from, apart from only using it for reviewing stuff, uh, but I don't actually use it anymore. That's a ten thousand pound full frame camera. I'm not using. It. I'm only using Michael Forth. Why is that? I just enjoy using it. Full stop. You know and. Uh, uh, so I, I, I guess, you know, in terms of uh, uh, the belief you know, about you know, what is going to uh, 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 prosper in the future or not is completely subjective, you know, like, and I mean, they have their own opinion. I respect that, but I don't like pe when people say, you know, oh, this is going to die. I, I totally disagree with that, you know, and they have whatever they want to say, oh, Michael Forth is sucked at low light. Fine, I accept that. Whatever, you know, they have their own opinion. They have their own technical uh, argument about certain things. And I totally respect that because I do understand the weaknesses and strength about Michael Four Third. And uh, so is, so is uh, 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 full frame in any other formats out there. You know, I have used them more, you know, even medium format cameras. So it's not that I have no knowledge. I just prefer to use Michael Four Third full stop. Okay, so um, let's go back to our list, right? You know, this is all about the most popular uh, 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 camera. So, and uh, okay, hello guys. Oh, I've got a few more questions here. Uh, a few more people. Camille, hello. Hello, Lizzie. And 
it should not be mentioned. <laughs> and hello, for Fabian, and uh, from Luxembourg. Hey, cool stuff. And uh, who else here? And uh, do you see Darren Miles' uh, recent recent uh, videos about the Olympus Pen F as well? You know, he said that was a horrible camera, even though that you know, like that is the that's the camera that Olympus should have uh, continue. And uh, we're gonna come into that a bit later on. Okay, that is cool. Uh, just answer a little bit question before moving to the uh, the, the uh, 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 list of the cameras that I have right here. So uh, yeah, while we're on the subject of the Michael Fortha is uh, dead, uh, so I'm sort of talk about South Korea. Uh, I don't know how many of you have heard of South Korea, and then also uh, the Olympus Imaging Division is exiting. Yes, I mean leaving. There's a uh, South Korea. Uh, for the time being, it is for good, and then that's how they announced it. They're gonna discontinue their business there. However, they are keeping their service uh, uh, department there, which means that they are gonna warrant all the cameras that they uh, the customer purchased, and also service them if they required. So the servicing departments and all the parts and everything that is going to continue there for several years. Uh, so that is not a total exit. Well. For them to have a still have an office, still have a place to repair cameras and to do things and to have a customer relation after sales services, that means that the people who are leaving there are mainly the obviously the 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 South Korean divisions and management uh, management team and also the potential sales team, right? Um, so it only about talk about sales. So it you know we might have heard about the the uh, the the reasons behind why the uh, uh, you know or several reasons not just what just one reason several reasons why uh, the Olympus has exited the, the uh, Korean market is first of all it's quite political apparently there's a Japanese boycott uh, 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 boycotting going on in in Korea so like they are. Uh, not just Olympus, but anything that's made from Japan. So this is actually a little bit of disappointing thing to hear, but you know that's what's been reported. And also decreasing sales, and I don't think that also uh, is Olympus exclusive. It's across the board. You know, look at 2020 now. We have a COVID-19 pandemic issues here. Camera sales is just not there. You know, it's full stop. Uh, there's no people going going out and to do things, and no people going out to buy things, and uh, it's just not happening. Um, so, you know, I think they actually made quite a wise decision on closing the sales department, even though they say it's an imaging department. Um, so I, I personally believe that if market returns uh, in a good form in the next year or two, it doesn't really stop them from going back in, you know, and uh, because the, sell, uh, the after sales and technical department are still there servicing customers. Um, and that means that quite easily they just send you know a director, a couple of managers there, and a you know team of five or six or even higher locally uh, uh, from these experts there to con uh, start the sales networking, and it's really simple for them to do that, and they could actually restart the process in a matter of weeks. Um, so I think that they've done a wise strategic um, um, uh, decision there, you know, by closing only the front line, so to speak. So, so that that's okay. You know, I don't I don't see that's a bad thing at all. If there is no sales going on, then we'll sort of cut the losses for now and see what happened. Um, but they're still kind enough to retain the, the technical staff there, which is actually quite a good thing. You know, you may never know. Nikon has been struggling for a long time as well. Nikon might do the same thing. Um, then uh, Canon, they may just do it as an expense and uh, uh, staying in, in in Korea. And also they are more into the pro. Uh, uh, market where for sports and stadium photography, you know, they ha they have a lot of market there, so they that may keep them there for the time being. But other than that, Fujifilm will experience the same thing. Uh, Ricoh, you know, uh, and and other are probably in a very similar boat. Uh, so I, that's that's kind of my take on the South Korean uh, issue. Uh, but I like. I don't know. You guys probably missed my Facebook live uh, last week because I did. I do a daily uh, a Facebook live as well for half an hour every morning, uh, between 9, uh, eleven to eleven thirty. Um, so I did talk about this particular issues here. If you go back to the financial results that which was released earlier this week, and uh, you can actually see that business is growing. Olympus as a general, and uh, everything is growing double figure. So you 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 only seeing one section 
and a tiny section of the entire Olympus Corporation. And don't forget, I also made a video, if you haven't seen that, you know, it's about the truth about Olympus. I talked about the other disciplines in the company, like medicals and scientific solutions. Uh, they are, they, they both account for over 75% of the entire company turnover and profit. Imaging division is only accounting for 6.7%. There you go. So like, uh, uh, even if it makes millions and millions of lost, the others are more than enough for covering it. And like I said in my uh, Truth, of, uh, Truth About Olympus video, I talked about, you know, the imaging division is actually used as an R&D department for their medical optics. So, you know, everything that we are doing right now, we everything we're seeing right now is actually kind of like a byproduct of whatever they, they research and, uh, for their medical equipment. So this has uh, always been the interesting thing uh, about Olympus. Uh, so they are not just relying on the imaging divisions to survive. They are simply passionate about photography. Full stop. <laughs> and uh, good morning, Connor. So hopefully you guys get a little bit idea. And uh, if you want to ask me anything, of course, I should. And I shall uh, answer you to the best of my knowledge. Of course, I cannot represent Olympus officially from the management side of it. And even though that I am an Olympus ambassador, whatever I said is purely my personal speculation and also my personal opinion about things. Uh, yes, there you go. So hopefully uh, uh, we'll give you some sort of reassurance that Olympus is not going anywhere. Uh, Olympus is still very healthy. I, I'm always in, always in talk with the management, the director uh, in, in the UK and Europe. So, you know, like I'm, I'm very friendly with them, so they know me very well. Uh, so I, I, I haven't heard anything negative, full stop. In fact, they are quite pleased with uh, the recent uh, performances, even though we have this horrible uh, pandemic issues that we're currently experiencing at the moment. But from what I heard, uh, Olympus is actually doing better than they expected. So that's, that's quite reassuring. So hopefully that's uh, something to comfort you guys, right? Okay, it's no problem. Olympus here. We're still here. <laughs> and so is Michael Forth that they're not going to do full frame. So stop asking me. <laughs> okay. And uh, let's go back to the list of our thing before I go back, uh, jump back to the uh, the comment section right here. Uh, first of all, let's go through with the most popular camera, right? It is the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II right here. I have right here. I have of course the uh, the uh, hundred year special or limited edition is the silver em1 mark ii which they only uh, I, I cannot remember the total number that they actually manufacture so i know it's very limited maybe only 1000 units worldwide uh, so i have one right here and i have been using it actually uh, uh, initially I, I wanted it just to be a shelf queen and just kind of like want to frame it up somewhere but uh, instead i actually started using it because uh, my other em1 mark ii uh, the really battered uh, ordinary black version um, I actually gave it to my friend to, or lend it to her to, to use for her new uh, channel. She wanted to start a channel, so like, I gave it to her to, 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 to just learn about, you know, filmings and stuff like that. So she's currently using my totally battered M1 Mark II. So I have my uh, silver version here. I'm going to talk about this right now. Okay, so why is this so popular? You know, I think... There's no denying. And I do really remember in 2016 when this camera was first announced, uh, a lot of people were complaining. Yes, I'm not joking. I know you guys love this camera now, but people actually complained in 2016 for one thing and one thing only. Well, listen to that. Price. Yep. This guy, when it first came up, it was $2,000. 1999 retail price and also in the uk it was 1899 when it first came out it was bloody expensive and i'm not joking how expensive this guy was you know when it first came out and uh, at the time you know for two grand you can actually get you know a lot of different things you know you can you can even of course afford a full frame camera you know like uh, uh the, the 6d the canon 60 dslr you know you can get it for like a thousand bucks or twelve hundred bucks you know this is two grand for a micro four third i know you can't i mean i said it again and again not don't compare apple and oranges but for two grand you have options right so people really straight away complain about the two grand and then uh, they thought you know this is not gonna this is not gonna work this is, this is gonna be a fail right and look, four years on, this is, 
This is one of the most popular and mo one of the most successful Olympus uh, mirrorless cameras ever in the lineup. The EM1 Mark II has proven itself to be a true workhorse, a really uh, a, a fundamentally sound camera that will satisfy a lot of professional and enthusiasts alike. You know, the features in this camera is truly phenomenal. And especially last year when, when Olympus gave us a Fairboy 3 update, you know, this thing is just mind blowing good. You know, even in today's standard, in 2020, and this is a four year old camera now, and then uh, it still performs as good as any modern day cameras. And that's how good this guy is. And I can, I can see why uh, people may, may actually consider buying this brand new in 2020. And also people who already own it, not even considering getting the Mark III because this guy is good enough. You know, why bother upgrading to the Mark III, right? And um, so this is definitely the reasons why the Mark II is so, so, so successful. And and obviously based on the poll, you know, you guys also agree to it. You know, this is the best, you know, in the Olympus lineup. And um, in terms of Mark III, I mean, uh, and uh, I have it right here, of course, and uh, oh, it's a bit heavy with everything attached to it. So in terms of the Mark III, and, uh, the, why I think I personally would use the Mark III over the Mark II these days is only because I need several features that would help me doing things better. Right, don't forget that you know, I work in, in, in uh, a professional environment. I need features that help me get things done more accurately and more reliably, right? And of course, faster, so three things. And, uh, and this thing does the job. And in commercial environments, in professional environments, you know, anything that can help us do things better, worth the money. And also like, don't forget that we do use the camera to the ground, you know, like, like I mentioned in my, my uh, uh, other EM, EM1 Mark II, it just completely battered to the, you know, scratches, dents everywhere, you know, like the shutter actuation has probably gone past 2000, uh, 200,000 already, it's probably reaching the end of life. So that camera is used up, you know, like that's how much I use a camera for professional environment. So that means that after two or three years, regardless, they are almost needs replacing, you know, and I do not want to sacrifice any reliability issues. So I will get a new camera anyway. So whether it's going to be another Mark II or a newer camera, the Mark III, so in my case, I just go for the Mark III because it's obviously it's newer and then uh, and uh, I uh, and it's got more features that will enable me to do things uh, quicker and more accurately. And in that case, save me money because I can do things quicker, right? Money, time, money, time, right? In professional environments, it's always like that. And uh, so this is why I think the Mark III would suit people. Uh, I mean, at least I mean. At, at least it's for the early adopters. They're most likely going to be origin, uh, already a professional Micro Four Third users, uh, professional uh, Olympus guys, or people who are considering upgrading from, let's say, EM5 and then go up to EM1 level, and they are just uh, wanting to spend that little bit extra to get those new features, like the advanced uh, facial tracking and stuff like that, you know, on the uh, Mark III model. So apart from that, I mean, I, I think I could foresee this will be also as popular as the uh, EM1 Mark II. And also, interestingly, if you remember what I just talked about, the, the pricing for the EM1 Mark II, which originally came out as two grand. The uh, EM1 Mark III, in contrast, the launch price is actually cheaper than the Mark II. Because in, in the UK, at least, you know, the launch price for the Mark II was $18.99. And now the launch price for the EM1 Mark III is $15.99. So it's 300 pounds cheaper compared to the Mark II in terms of launching. And uh, I'm pretty sure they're gonna be reducing the price very soon. As already actually, in, uh, as of now, uh, I know the Mark III already have uh, 100 pound discounts for June. This whole June, we're gonna have 100 pound discounts so we can get it for 14.99. And the EM1 Mark II is now one grand, I think it's one grand, 999, I think. And so it's quite a good deal actually if you are interested in getting any of these cameras. And if you do want to get these cameras, and then, and uh, of, of course in Olympus, UK is doing these deals here and anywhere else, I'm not entirely sure your country or your, your locality where you have similar deals or not, but and, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, you will have some sort of deal very, very soon in, in summer days. You know, obviously they always try to promote their cameras for even though we may not have proper holidays, but at least it's still a summer thing. So um, they will have some sort of promotions in your areas very, very soon. 
So and uh, let's go on to continue and uh, to the next most popular model. Let me just go back to my chart so I remember the next model. Of course, of course, of course. How could I say no to this? Whew. Right. This little guy here is the Olympus Pen F. Is absolutely to me stunning. Right. I know Darren Mills just talked about this camera is uh, one of the biggest missed opportunity for Olympus. And I agree and disagree in many ways. And uh, first of all, uh, I personally believe the, uh, the, the Pen F is actually a very successful camera. In fact, they couldn't produce uh, enough to satisfy the demand. They had no problem selling this camera. And uh, even though that it wouldn't say, uh, it, I wouldn't say it's a, uh, uh, an instant hit because of the price, once again, because when this guy first came out, it was expensive, you know, and it wasn't cheap at all. Considering it's not weather sealed, it's got no EM1 focusing system, so it's not hybrid uh, AF, it's contrast detect only, and it's, uh, it's a pen, right? Okay, regardless, pen is always associating to be a slightly more affordable uh, option in the Olympus lineup. So it wasn't supposed to be an expensive camera, but look at it this way. They did call it the Pen F, not the EPL Pen. So it's, they they know it's going to be slightly different. And when you pick it up, you know, and I'm not I'm not joking. Every time I show this camera to people, as what Darren said, everyone would only praise about the camera, not only how it looks, but how it feels on the hand. People who hold this up camera say, "Cool, it feels solid. It feels like a really solid metal, you know, and it just feels good." And when I actually explain a little bit more to them. And they actually start to appreciate the craftsmanship of this camera. There's no screw, first of all, you know, on the whole body. And then um, it's got the rangefinder style EVF on one side of the body. It's had dedicated mode dial at the front, you know, which can change the color profile, which I totally in love with. Uh, even though it's not customizable, which is a bit of a shame. But, but other than that, I do like to use the mono exclusively on the front dial, and then changing the, the actual uh, color sensitivity at the back, and uh, which is... Fantastic. I love this combination for street photography and travel photography. This has been and always will be my tool for street photography because it's just a joy to use this particular camera. So in terms of spec wise, you know, and uh, I don't think at the time, you know, Olympus could have done anything better because uh, uh, when the M1 Mark II came out in 2016, this came out in 2015, uh, kind of end of 2015 uh, or beginning of 2016. The technology just wasn't there yet. You know, the, this is TruePic 7 processor, so it's quite old. And then, uh, so in terms of power, like I mentioned in my previous uh, uh, live stream, um, and a lot of the capabilities and speed are all relating to the processor. And unfortunately, this guy wasn't using the latest TruePic 8 at the time, you know, which the EM1 Mark II eventually adopted. So uh, the autofocus just cannot cope with the hybrid. Uh, sensors. So the amount of data it needs to be, uh, to, uh, the amount of data needs to be processed, just too much for TruePic 7, full stop. So it can only be as good as the EM1 Mark, so EM5 Mark II, unfortunately. Um, but other than that, you know, and just really depending on what your uh, uh, your priority is, uh, like I said it so many times, and uh, and I don't think that you know people should disagree, is that this is still a very genuinely good photographic tool. And if you are still primarily 99.9% .9 uh, uh, photographer, then this would definitely still serve, uh, serve you very, very well. And uh, I, I can't see it going anywhere else. And I do think that this will become a history and also a classic. It's already an instant classic by uh, you know, just right now, because it's still on sale at the moment. Um, so you can still buy it brand new. I'm not sure how many would buy it, but then I'm pretty sure that uh, 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 you know people who may want to get a brand new Pen F will still buy one of these guys. And I'm pretty sure that the, the secondhand market is already floating quite a lot already. And, uh, so it's maybe time to get one a future classic right now. So the Pen F is definitely an interesting thing. Um, um, I know that there are some people are talking about Pen F too. Uh, <laughs> and um, well, it's no official. 
uh, announcement, no official uh, details or leaks or anywhere. People have been talking about it. Uh, so I don't want to speculate too much at this moment in time. But personally, off the book, you know, I would like to see a Pen F2, of course. You know, is how much I love the Pen F. You can see my emotion there. You can see my passion towards that camera. Um, that if there is a Pen F2 come out, just something that I would just grab it regardless of the price. And then this is how good that camera is. Uh, that, uh, so if the, another one come out with, let's say, uh, the M5 Mark III features and weather seal, that would be the camera for me. And full stop, I would not change anything. I would just grab that thing. Doesn't matter how much it is. Even if it's more than the M1X, and that may be stretching a little bit. But uh, yeah, you know what I mean. I will get it. <laughs> and uh, Adrian, you love my cap. Thank you. <laughs> Um, yeah, so so this is this is the second most popular camera on the list, and I can I cannot disagree more. And then uh, uh, I think it is a fantastic, fantastic still camera. Full stop. May not be on video terms, and uh, this is something that I I guess in 2020 now, a lot of uh, newer photographers or newer uh, uh, people who are getting into photography, if they have a little bit of money to spend they probably would go past the Pen F simply because it hasn't got video features. Well, it has video, but it doesn't shoot anything close to what the lowest ranked cameras that can offer these days in 2020. Even in, in terms of video wise, it's even uh, 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 like, you know, worse than the, uh, the EPL9. You know, it doesn't even shoot 4K, no, no slow-mo, nothing. It's just, it's just 1080 uh, 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 and, and, and also it's got no hybrid AF, so you can't even check your faces properly. So unfortunately, in, in terms of video terms, you can almost discount it as no video. You might as well just forget about the videos and just purely using as a photographic camera. Okay, let's go to the third one on the list. Let's see. The third one on the list is um, EM10 Mark II, right, okay, I don't personally have the EM10 Mark II, uh, I do have the EM10 Mark III, which is right here, and, and once again, I probably don't disagree, and I don't think um, there's anything wrong with the EM10, because the EM10 has in, it been a very influential camera for Olympus, right, that's a, that's a, this is the thing. Now, I'm actually about to produce a video for this, so you stay tuned for my YouTube uh, uh, video for the EM10. And then, um, so this guy here, the sole reason by because it's so successful is two things here. First, features. Second, is price. Right, okay. Third, the look. I have to say that because it does look sexy, right? You know, the, uh, the, the EM10. And, uh, it's as good looking as any other uh, OMD cameras out here, but it's just cheaper and way cheaper compared to, let's say, the M5 series, of course, the M1 series. And uh, even though it has a plastic body, and even though it may not have a lot of the manual features or, or other high-end uh, uh, fast burst and, and also this continuous focusing, whatever, you know, like all these things that the, the bells and whistles, you know, for Olympus. But it does offer you everything you need to capture great photograph and even being creative such as light composite and live bulb is they all have it in this camera and like this is cool you know for majority of the people out there they don't use pro capture they don't need to shoot like 60 frames per second they don't need to shoot 18 frames per second even they don't track things you know majority of the thing they just want to step a couple of snapshots you know go and travel and uh, and things like that and and frankly this is more than enough and having live bolt and live composite would give you the advantage of doing low light photography being light painting all kinds of crazy stuff going on you know like you can do that with the em10 and the thing is because the the menu and this is the only menu system uh, on the omd line that has graphical inf interface so it has pictures to tell you you know what what effect you're going for and that's cool so that means the menu is easy to use big icons and everything's big and then uh, and so it's, it's a very easy to lift camera and in fact it's so easy that my kids actually can use this and uh, so that is so good you know this is how good the, the em10 is and that is also why a lot of people was first get this camera got familiar with this camera and eventually move up to the higher level like the em5 and em1 series later on but having said that from 
I guess from the people that I speak to, from the people that who message me, for instance, a lot of them actually use the EM10. You know, and uh, even though they they produce like you know, for me, I thought they were using EM5, EM1 already, but no, they're actually still using EM10, and that shows the capabilities of the EM10 cameras. And majority are still using Mark II, and I'm not joking. So that's why when I saw the the, the vote, Mark II is more popular than the Mark III. I wasn't surprised at all because I, you know, from judging from personal experience and from the messages that I received from people, the Mark II came top. And uh, um, and I guess one reason why the Mark III uh, didn't do as well as the Mark II was because there weren't much to differentiate between the Mark III and the Mark II. I know the Mark III obviously offer 4K video recording. It has uh, HD, not 4 HD, yeah, HD slow motion, 120 frames per second. But apart from that, there little to differentiate between the two. And uh, and that's why that like, people may already have the Mark II didn't want to upgrade to the Mark III, or people who want to get into the, Olim uh, the OMD line, you know, get into the Olympus world, they consider buying the Mark II because at the time Mark III came out, Mark II was significantly cheaper. So they just go for the cheaper version. You can get the Mark II for about 300 quid. So that is really dirt cheap. So it's, it's still a very capable camera, even though it only has 16 megapixel, but same as the Mark III. And that is exactly why the Mark II is more successful than the Mark III. So I guess, if the Mark IV ever come out, you know, it has to be significantly better than the Mark III that, is, that they currently sell at the moment. So it will be interesting to see what they come up with. And what's your thought about the Mark IV? If, you, if the Mark, uh, so EM10 Mark IV is ever going to come out, with a, what sort of thing you would like to see? And then that's something I would like to ask you guys as well. Okay, so let's look at and the next one on the line is... Uh, okay, here we go. EM5, right, okay, this is interesting because the score a tie between the EM5 Mark II and the EM5 Mark III is equal between the two, having 9.4% each. So this is, a, this is a 9.4 from the 600 people who voted. So this is, I have the Mark II here, of course the Mark III is right here, so I have both of them right here in front of me, I have the black and the silver, so the Mark, Mark II, they, they actually look the same, so I can't really tell. This is the Mark II, this is the Mark III, and uh, I love, personally, I love them both, and, and this is a fact, you know, I had the Mark I, of course, and I sold the Mark I and got the Mark II. Uh, the, the Mark II was a significant camera for me, because it was the camera to drove me into the professional world eventually, and kind of made my decision for changing into a pro uh, professional Olympus user, you know, um, not that I'm a pro, before you know, I was already the pro Canon guy, but I'm just saying that uh, when I was a when I was a Canon guy, already using the Mark II on the side and having as a second or third camera uh, at every job that I go to, I always try to like to carry this. I don't know why, it's just always with me, and not just about the look, but it just. Um, I guess it's the feeling, you know, when it's a photographer, when you use something, you know, it's quite difficult to to uh, I would say describe about feeling towards a camera. Uh, I don't know about you guys, you, you may agree with me or you may not agree with me. And uh, uh, when you hold something in your hand, when you feel the connection between yourself, your brain, your camera, it's almost like all in one unit, you know? And I don't know if that, if that makes sense. Uh, so like, whenever I hold the EM5, yeah, it's strange. You've got this strange connect connections here. It almost feels very natural. And I just take the camera and just shoot. <laughs> it's weird, right? You know, it just, as soon as you pick up the EM5, it just makes you want to shoot. It, 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 it is actually, it's like a drug, you know, it's really weird. It maybe, maybe they put something on the coating, yeah? So as soon as you touch it, you, you just kind of can't get rid of it. You're just like, oh shit, I can't get rid of it. Like that, it is weird. But this is, this is one of my favorite cameras and of all time among, the, among my collections here because I did use this guys a lot. I travel with this guys a lot. And uh, even though it looks kind of new, if you, look, if you uh, under close inspection, you'll see scuffs everywhere and then you see all the corners being rubbed off. Uh, but it is a great camera. I love this guy here. And of course, when the Mark III came out and then I got one here for my for my vlogging and travel, only because it's, uh, it's in, it inherits a lot of the, uh, um, the uh, uh, features and also the form factor from the Mark II, of course, but making it more like a little brother's the M1 Mark II. 
Yes, because it has hybrid, finally, hybrid uh, AF, which including the face detection and, um, and contrast detect. So you can now properly track subjects, which is actually fantastic if you want to do a little bit of vlogs, uh, walk and talk stuff, if you don't want to hold up a very heavy and big camera on the street. This is perfect, right? You know, like this is how I do my vlogging, by the way. And I just hold it like this. This is uh, uh, my setup. Basically, you've got a 12 mil here, and then you can see ND filter here. This is exactly what I do on the street. So uh, of course I have my mic on top of it. Uh, this is this is it. This is my vlogging kit and how small and light it is. I could just really shove it in my bag here and I don't have to worry about it too much. It's just a great uh, uh, going around solution if you want to do a little bit of hybrid stuff in terms of video and stills at the same time. I love this guy still, you know, like Mark II is still kind of in my heart in a way because it's just what pushed me into uh, being a pro in Olympus. And, uh, but the Mark III is a evolution camera that I was saying that is, uh, is as good as ever. You know, if you haven't experienced an M5, uh, M5 camera, whether it's Mark I, Mark II, Mark III, the Mark III, of course, is, is now has all the bells and whistles in terms of like AF performances. Um, the weather ceiling is definitely better than the Mark II, according to the book. Um, oh, and also, you know, just the overall connection once again it has a similar sort of connections here now of course he's got he's got a mold out on the right on the right side which is actually uh a lot better for if you've got the one-handed uh, kind of operation always on the in one uh, on the in five mark two the mold dial is on the left so you always have to kind of using two hands if you want to change mode from video to to photo for instance you have to actually use the left hand to do that but in this case I don't have to, you know, I can easily just unlock the button and just turn the mode dial to a different mode, uh, as simple as that. So that's why I think the Mark III is definitely more usable and more uh, 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 fluid in terms of operations. And in terms of speed, of course, it's got the latest and the greatest stuff and uh, it will be faster than the Mark II. But once again, if you're purely a photographic guy, the Mark II still wouldn't disappoint you even though it has only 16 megapixels once again, and then, uh, but it is a great camera still. It has you know, fast enough AF if you're only doing, uh, uh, let's say portraits and, and just general uh, photography and landscaping and then uh, travel photography. I think the, the Mark II is definitely enough for you. You don't really need 20 megapixels and you don't really need the, uh, uh, the better uh, CAF performances from the latest contra uh, the face detect uh, AF performance. So that's cool, right? Okay, let's go on to have a look at the next one right here. Um, the, da, 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 da. Okay, I've gone through quite a few already. Oh, EM1 X is the next one. Okay, right, well, I don't have it in, uh, well, I'm actually using it right now, filming. And then, uh, so, uh, so that's, you go. So, right. I'm using right now, so I can't really hold it in front of you because show the EM1 X and uh, so everything is, as lovely as ever in terms of performance again uh, because as soon as the M1 X came out as soon as I tried it and I thought I told myself that I need to have it and once again it's because of what I need as a professional um, I know the M1 Mark II and the Mark III are both fantastic in terms of build quality and ruggedness and also in terms of speed the M1 X is definitely on an other level in terms of reliability ruggedness and speed and uh, yeah it's, it's something else and you haven't really tried it before I know the M1X totally defies the Michael Forth, uh, Michael Forth essence being small light portable you know this is what Michael Forth is all about right and the M1X wasn't about that at all what is it about though reliability ruggedness and speed <laughs> it's about these three things and um, it's quite, it's quite hard to, to kind of, I'm not trying to convince you guys, but as a professional, once again, and I'm, I'm only speaking from my personal uh, 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 experience and my needs as a, as a guy who always go out and shoot uh, in different locations, under different weather conditions, and uh, I need something to perform. And uh, I, it's quite hard to say that, you know, I, in my Canon days, even though I had weather seal camera, a professional Canon camera, like the 5D series, I had it was one. They broke down on me, and I and and okay, I'm not trying to lie about this and trying to bluff about this, uh, but they did break down on me. I went to China do a, or do a travel uh, documentary with the Canon system, 
and the lenses were fine, but the camera disappointed me because I, I was shooting in Guilin and then uh, 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 it was basically chucking down rain, torrential rain. And I was out, you know, I don't mind weather condition. I don't mind weather elements if I'm out and about. I continue to shoot. So I shoot and shoot and shoot. And what happened? My camera ceased to function. Well, it's bad. You know, if I, if I shoot something for work and, and it stops. <laughs> so like, you know, uh, and, and it's really horrible, you know. So the, my 5D broke down and then I had to rush back to the... To the uh, to the hotel and take it all off, dry them up with uh, dry the uh, the entire camera lenses, everything with a, with a tower, put it next to the heater, turn it on full blast, uh, and leave it on overnight. And lucky it came back on, you know, came back alive uh, the next morning. I think it's because it's just moisture; it's nothing greasy and anything like that. So as long as the moisture is gone, it should come back. Uh, so that was what happened, but it did break down on me. But out of the four years that I've been with Olympus, and ever since I used the EM1 Mark II, as a, and when I switched to Olympus, that never ever happened. And four years, four years I have been in the rain, in the snow, in the sandy situation, in dusty environment. No, it hasn't failed me. No, not once. And I, and I, that's how I treasure the reliability side of it in from Olympus cameras and I know they're rugged they're really cool and um, so when they had the E1X when I uh, went to the launch event and touched the camera and and, uh, and actually before that I had the prototype so I, 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 I was testing the, the camera I loved it you know immediately I could feel the, the, the difference in terms of build quality compared to the Mark II straight away you know as soon as I hold it up this thing if you if you think this guy is, uh, how would I put it? If you think this thing is built like a tank, the E1X will feel like a nuclear bunker. And that is it, you know, it, it is completely undestroyable. You know, it, it's the G-Shock in the camera world. It's so rugged and so tough, you know, like it's almost, it's just something that is so solid, you can just go and use it as a self-defense weapon, full stop. And this is how good it is. And I do love the E1X and, um, and for that particular reason. And I know for the, from, the, from the fact that, you know, this guy never broke down. I mean, I know the E1X would definitely be better than this, judging, judging by how it feels on the hand straight away. And ever since I got the E1X uh, uh, at the beginning of last year, and then, uh, and then uh, I, I have been out once again on different situations, different weather conditions, and not problem whatsoever is still survive any sort of weather conditions um yeah so this is why now the m1x is my workhorse at location together with the m1 mark 3 uh the m1 mark 3 is usually uh, for me to use for filming tools because it's lighter i can put on a gimbal for instance the m1x for my handheld stuff and uh, so they are both very 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 good and uh, let's look at the next one shall we Mm. Okay, right, I've got two more cameras to go through and I'm going to go and come into the comment section. The next one is the Tough TG. I actually do have the Tough TG. I have both the 5 and 6 and uh, not here with me, so I can't actually show it to you guys. Um, actually, it's quite, quite surprising. It came up to nearly 3% from the amount of votes that I got. So Eve is is actually nearly the same vote as the E1X, and uh, so but TG6 and five are both fantastic camera, and I know a lot of uh, uh, people who are now Olympus users actually do own uh, a, an Olympus Tough camera for second camera as, as a kind of like a pocket camera. If they go out, you want to carry anything just just for a slim camera. Um, that can perform in, in any sort of situations. Once again, because of how rugged it's built, it's drop proof, freeze proof, and, and yeah, you can waterproof, you can dive with this thing. Uh, so the, the Tough is actually a pretty cool camera. I mean, I have two of them, and then uh, I always use it to, let's say, go to kids' events and uh, something, you know, that they don't allow proper photographies, for instance, and I would just take the little TG with me. Uh, even on holiday, the TG is always in my pocket, in, in the, on the side of my uh, camera back. It's very small, so I can just slip it there. And uh, in case if my, let's say my uh, 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 bigger cameras 
cannot go to certain places, I will just take the little thing out. And even though sometimes you just want something quick, that guy comes out as well because it's got a zoom lens. It's, it's very versatile. If I would ever need to dip into the water, I'd use the Tough TG. As simple as that. So it's a pretty cool camera. And finally, and finally is the EPL. I'm, I'm a little surprised what, uh, you know, it is the lowest, you know, uh, uh, in terms of votes from you guys. And I would have expected a little bit more. Can you guys tell me why you guys don't like the EPL series? I actually think it's a pretty sexy camera. Don't you think? And then um, uh, it's, a, it's a really good looking thing, even though it may not have all the bells and whistles from the uh, 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 from you know the OMD lines, but it's still an Olympus camera. It still have most of the features that you get from the Olympus camera, like the uh, EM10 in particular, because they're almost brother and sister between the two. Uh, one is of course uh, have a DSLR shape. Let me get the EM10 again. The DM10 is right here. So, like this is the EM10 right here. So this is the EPL. So they are actually the same thing. The only difference between, uh, the only two differences between the two is, first of all, this guy has five axis stabilization, while this one only has three. And the other thing is, this guy has an EVF, more like a traditional DSLR shape form factor, while this one hasn't got any EVF whatsoever. It's just using the back of the screen, and they, but they both have flip screen just like that. And then uh, see, they both have the flip flip screen. It's not fully articulated. In terms of video specs. Photographic specs, they are identical between the two. So there's no difference between the two. So uh, it, I guess ultimately depending on the preferences, what sort of form factor you prefer. You know, I know a lot of people out there, especially some of the modern photographers now, they don't, they're not really used to EVF. They just rather just shoot it like this, looking at the screen, because it's just a convenient thing to do, just bigger, it's easier. Um, and, uh, so this may actually be a better option because it's actually slimmer because without the, uh, the EVF housing on top of the camera is smaller. Yeah, that's that. And in terms of the form factor, it's not bad, even though it has a slightly smaller grip compared to EM10, and then uh, it's still a very comfortable uh, camera to hold. If you are complaining about the Pen F that I showed you earlier, and then uh, this is actually slightly better to hold, the, e the, e the EPL 9 and 10, because it has a slight elevation on the side of the camera, so it allows you to rest your fingers really nicely. Uh, so this is why I think ergonomically the, uh, the, the EPL is actually, to me, slightly better than the Pen F. But I still like the Pen F. I still like it. So there you go. This is the entire list of camera voted by you guys. And then, uh, yes, I'm not. I have most of them on the list. Uh, sadly, <laughs> um, and uh, some of the models I actually have more than one, as I can show you. I have two EM1 Mark III here. Um, I also have two EM1 Mark II. Uh, one is lended to someone else. Uh, so yeah, it's it's something that I, I I'm quite passionate about, and I do believe uh, uh, what Olympus is personally pursuing, and also the Olympus um, uh, enthusiasm towards photography, because I know that they're passionate about the whole uh, affordabilities and you know, making sure everyone can enjoy uh, photography as an art form, as a hobby, as a profession, you know, they really truly respected uh, uh, that particular field. So let's come on to the, f uh, the, the, uh, 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 the comment section, let's see what else you guys talk about and then we go from there. I'm going to go straight to the bottom and kind of work my way up back up. Okay. Um, Right, Roman says that although no difference in price, and uh, one second, the light seems to be dimming a little bit. Let me just turn back up a little bit. One second, hopefully that will be a little bit better. I think the, the light is definitely uh, is definitely uh, slow, I mean, getting dimmer now, and the outside is actually pretty wet. So lucky that I did not go outside to, uh, to do this stream, otherwise I will be probably soaking right now so this is what I don't want to happen so Roman saying that there's no differences between EPL and the EM10 series uh, the, the EM10 is much better but like I said I think that is uh, probably uh, true depending on what sort of preference you have yes it has five axis stabilization and uh, but in terms of actual practicality side of it I don't see much difference between the two and uh, funny enough the the EM10 Mark III doesn't work with Sing IS, so uh, so even if you have the 300, 300 f4 or the 12 to 100, I 
don't think you can get the maximum out of this camera here. So that means that you're probably equal terms in terms of stabilization when it comes to photography. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, well, there will be subtle differences depending on how, um, uh, 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 how serious you are for your gear, how much you want to push to the limit. Uh, I guess that may come to a point that there will be a difference if you really go to the really like straight to the edge of the cliff and really pushing it to the edge to the limit. Then, then that case, the EM10 may just be edging out in terms of performance uh, compared to the EPL cameras. Um, David, what's my favorite lens for Olympus? My favorite lens is this little guy here, not this one. Which one is this? Uh, is this guy here is the uh, 17 millimeters 1.2 Pro, only because I use this so often that you know, a lot of my photos and videos is kind of like using this lens, and uh, I, I just use this all the time. It's uh, it's good, it's good, and it's also I love the one point two. Not so much about the bokeh, but it's the flexibility allowing me to shoot in lower light situations and maintaining some sort of uh, uh, separations and stuff like that. So it's actually very very good. The Hokatron, like your EPL9, want a discrete camera. So you do have the EPL9, fantastic. Uh, I wonder which camera do you have? I have the lovely denim blue. Both of you guys, if you know me well enough, I'm a denim guy. I love my jeans. So that's why I, when they when they advertise this camera in blue, I said, like, oh, nice. And they actually advertise this with the jeans as well. So I thought this would be my camera. So actually, I bought this just because of the blue. <laughs> I know, I know. Okay, and uh, Red, uh, Rob should follow. Uh, okay, will not make sense is what I meant to say. Oh, hang on, uh, I'm not, I'm lost here. I don't know what you said before. You need to go down and our, our conversation with a new medical lens from Olympus will make sense. <laughs> oh, right, okay. I get what you mean. Uh, yeah, you know what? That's one thing that I haven't talked about a lot is that um, if you, uh, you know, you guys have joined me early on, you probably heard about me talking about the Olympus other disciplines. Uh, 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 you know, they are very, very, and I mean very, very big in the scientific and also medical uh, application. So the bulk of the company's turnover and profits were actually from the medical and, and scientific solutions, accounting for over 75%. The imaging department, which is what we're using right now, the cameras and lenses, are only 6.7% of the entire company turnover and profit. So it's actually very small by comparison. And uh, But what I would like to highlight to you guys that why I treasure uh, Olympus lenses, especially the pro lenses, is that they are genuinely good. And, and actually, and I should change the word, they are genuinely great. Um, let me give you an example. Right, I own a lot of different lenses in my throughout my career. I mean, I have expensive lenses, I have cheap lenses, I have ultra high quality lenses like uh, the top uh, optics from Zeiss, top optics from Leica. These are top top glass. You know, if you ask anybody out in the camera world, they will agree that you know these companies produce the top lenses in the world. So I have them. I adapted to the Olympus Micro Four Third sensors, and immediately. I can tell that they're not performing as well as the Micro Four Third lenses, right? Okay, it's like this: the Micro Four Third sensors are two, two times crop factor. In essentially, is magnifying the the lens, so that everything that you may seem to see is crystal and clear and sharp, very detailed on a full frame camera. No matter how many megapixels you have, if you look into it and put it on once as soon as you put it into the Micro Four Third sensor it becomes slightly soft, only because it's just magnified, right? And now, in contrast, if you slap in a pro lens or any other high quality premium lenses from Micro Four Third platform, if it's sharp on a Micro Four Third, sharper than the adapted full frame lenses, they can immediately know that if you, going back to full frame, these lenses will be extremely sharp, even sharper than the top uh, full frame lenses that are currently produced by other manufacturers. And uh, uh, this is amazing. This is just truly amazing how how good they are. But it's not surprising because why right, Olympus produce lenses for medical use, and they need top optics for all the scanners, for all the endoscope, for all the uh, therapeutic equipments. 
they need high quality optics to do that job and they need really good imaging softwares and good imaging hardware in terms of sensors and stuff like that and that's why Olympus sensors has one of the higher dynamic range in in regardless of format you know if you look into it you know uh, recently uh, digital camera world pr published a graph a, from the in-house uh, uh, testing Olympus sensors the, especially the M1 series the M1 Mark III uh, it has more dynamic range than most of the competitors out there I mean bars you know Sony and maybe some other bigger sensors but apart from that they are on top right on the top kind of layer in terms of dynamic range in a lower ISO of course uh, so that shows how good they are in terms of imaging uh, technology I don't know what other people actually talked about you know sometimes I just believe they talk rubbish but from a photographer who used the camera every single day I'm taking tens of thousands of photos every year I have absolutely no problem using the sensor and I think it's actually definitely one of the best sensors I've ever used in terms of like tweaking highlights and shadows in, 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 in multiple areas and that's why I think you know a lot of people who just completely talk rubbish when they haven't really used it uh, uh, for a long long time and they really truly appreciate what they actually can do if they're simply just doing test charts and things like that I, it doesn't reflect on the actual genuine practical day-to-day -day professional use from a camera and uh, and of course you know I wouldn't say such a thing if I don't have any other thing to compare and like I said also I've used Leica I used Canon I used Fuji before that you know so like, I do have a lot of experience I can't say that I'm I know everything across the board you know and I don't use Nikon for instance a digital wise I mean, used their film cameras before but not digital cameras so I don't and I won't say that you know they are better than them, whatever. But ultimately, all I want to say is that ever don't ever try to believe a lot of the you know so-called reviewers, especially you can tell that they are very one-sided. Uh, the more more better, so it's just for you to go and grab a memory card, go to the local camera store. Oh, yeah, maybe a bit difficult now, but you know, try to do that and then um, slap in your memory card, do some test shots, and go back home and try it yourself you know that's the best way and in fact Olympus always offer this uh, touch and try uh, scheme that uh, uh, in different countries so that you can actually borrow the camera for a day or two and just take it home and just shoot around just so you can familiarize yourself with the camera kit and things like that and making sure that it is the right camera for you so judge it by using it not by listening now you don't have to listen to me either you know you just have to try it yourself and that's the best way to appreciate a camera making sure that is the right tool for you okay let's go for the next um michael shoop they say accessory grip as versatility i think you're talking about something i think i'm actually i should be re reading from the top rather than from the bottom because i think some might have dragged on a little bit now let me just go back to from the top to see from some of the earlier comments here right uh sam okay let's go from sam chang hello you got the same surname that's cool man a few yes brother and uh hi jimmy for you to but m1 mark ii to or the e1x 12 to 200 <laughs> what you have a very different combination there okay that's uh that's a little bit difficult to to kind of say between the two because uh you have two pro stuff on one side and you have one pro and one premium on the other so you have the M1 Mark III and the 12 to 100 Pro, these are two pro level equipment. That one is a pro body, one's a pro lens. Um, that you will get the maximum uh, uh, quality from it because uh, uh, the M1 Mark III has the same stabilization compared to M1X, and uh, and you can both have Sing IS up to 7.5 stop of stabilization. Image quality image quality is essential. The sa essentially the same. Both have the joystick to change the autofocus. In terms of autofocus, M1 Mark III may have a little bit of upper hand. On video terms because the track faces better and also uh, in terms of photographic uh, uh, capabilities the enhanced uh, portrait eye tracking is also better than the M1X what M1X excel is it, what I said before is the ruggedness the reliability and the speed and also um, in terms of uh, uh, EVF is slightly bigger even though it's the same resolution but the M1X does have a bigger EV, uh, uh, EVF um, the 12 to 200, however, is a premium or more consumer level lens, even though it has a bigger reach. So for that, I would, 
If you only have to choose between the two, I would suggest or recommend you getting the EM1 Mark III and the 12 to 100 Pro. That would be the the one that I would go in for. Even though you may sacrifice the the 100 millimeters and the long end, you know, but then uh, uh, you you could easily you know get another uh, longer lens to compensate that later on. And uh, uh, but in terms of combination wise, I think that's a better bet for you. Um, <laughs> Roman said that Penaf is almost winning, <laughs> almost, almost. I thought the Penaf would win, and that's that's what I was thinking. Even though that I use the uh, E1 series for work, but I do uh, hope you know the if the Penaf would win. But in fact, no, the E1 Mark II came out on top eventually. So let's see. It's funny, you know, like I'm talking about that graph that I showed you earlier, and uh, I'll just give you it again. This graph here, and. Uh, it's funny, yeah, since I posted yesterday, yeah, and immediately I saw some people uh, 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 starting the comments really quickly. And uh, uh, I literally build this graph yeah, as it comes along, yeah, as it progresses. So every hour I go back and check it, and I see this, this bar going in and out, in and out, in and out like this. It's just really funny to watch. And uh, I'm thinking, oh, I, can, I think after about five, six hours, I already see the M1 Mark II came, came really quickly, and then the Pen F. These two are clear winners. And then uh, it just between the two kind of fighting like neck to neck, you know, I don't know which one would come up on top. And eventually, like, I did close the, the calculations uh, right about uh, two o'clock this afternoon. So I, I may have missed some at the end of the day, but I don't think it would make much difference. So uh, uh, the E1 Mark II just came out just by that little bit there. Just a shame. <laughs> Camille, hello. Um, uh, I have a question to everyone. And I saw the uh, so E1... Uh, Mark M1X a week ago and the new, oh, you changed from the M1X to the M1 Mark III, okay. Just got an order from the motorcycle movie. Does anyone know the AI focus in works in video mode in M1X? Motorcycle, no, it only works with, uh, actually no, the in video mode, the AI tracking is not enabled. So like the AI tracking only works for photography, not in movie unfortunately so uh, the movie is still using the uh, normal uh, 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 focus point tracking so of course you can use as a single point you can group it into three by three five by five or entire screen and uh, so that is still based on um, that particular tracking algorithm um, so it's no different between the one uh, uh, so e1 mark 3 or the e1 x is exactly the same in video mode uh, and in terms of performance i Think that they both very very equal because uh, uh, yeah, speed wise that's how I, I can see as much as I can see but if you shoot a lot of people the E1 Mark III may have an upper hand because it can uh, you can track faces slightly better and also you can select which face to track on the E1 Mark III that is cool right um, you can do that with the one uh, Mark III but not the X so I hope that clear things out a little bit and uh, Okay, let's see right here. And uh, hello, Kelso. <laughs> we are open to a giveaway. <laughs> I'm not giving away my collection unless you win something from me. <laughs> okay, and uh, let's see now. Excellent stuff. And uh, okay, right. Hello. And I received my E1 Mark II. I have a lot to learn, but what a great camera. Small, lighter compared to my D90. And my problem is I wasn't good with my Nikon. Not sure I'll be better on an Oli. Right, okay. First of all, welcome to the Olympus world. Welcome to the family. And uh, we are a very open group. Of course, you know, we welcome everybody and we never try to talk bad to others and like others trying to talk back to, to the Olympus people. But, you know, we, we are very cool and, and uh, uh, we are a whole bunch of enthusiasts here, very passionate about photography and this is what Olympus is all about. So, yes, D90 was a, actually it's not a big DSLR by, uh, on its own, but if you switch from a DSLR, DSLR to any mirrorless camera, you will find... Uh, the uh, the uh, the weight saving just on the body alone is quite significant, especially on the micro four thirds. So like now you got the M1 Mark II definitely will be a lot a lot smaller than the D90. In terms of whether you can get you better shots, well that's subject to uh, that of course is depending on you. However, the E1 Mark II does have a lot of little tricks on the uh, uh, on the camera. 
uh, things like ProCapture, if you are doing a lot of uh, 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 kind of bird photography, for instance, if you want to capture some, some unexpected actions and things like that, you know, the ProCapture is a really great tool to use. And if you want to do something creative, like nighttime photography, long exposure, light trail, star trails, astrophotography, uh, D90 would be very, very difficult. You know, and then unless you do a lot of trial and error, a lot of practice, you know, before you can kind of get anything decent. On the Olympus camera, because you have light bulb and light composite, you can definitely feel comfortable using them. Try it out, you know, um, and we'll just maybe go online, just check a little bit about the live composite and light bulb um, the features, and I may do some uh, tutorial features in, in the future. And uh, it's a very simple tool to use and will get you some amazing shots in no time at all. You know, the live composite especially, it's difficult to get an overexposure. You know, if you've done a lot, of, uh, if you've done some long, uh, long exposure shots before using your D90, and you will, you will know exactly what I mean. Because on the DSLR, you know, you first of all you can't see uh, what's going on on the screen. You just have to wait and wait and wait and wait. You know, by by the time you uh, stop the shutter in after thirty seconds, you might find that your shot is way overexposed. But on, on the Olympus Live Composite, you know. It doesn't. You can actually see the whole thing build up on the LCD screen live. So you can actually click stop whenever you feel that you reach the uh, the correct point of exposure, and you, so you never get a bad shot in Olympus. So that is how easy to use. So hopefully you enjoy your Olympus Mark II and then uh, the E1 Mark II, and uh, let me know how you get on. Of course, you know you can always come back, ask me any questions, uh, or ask anybody in this community here. Is there great people? And uh, I'm pretty sure any one of them can help you out. So let's see anyone here, Stuart, and uh, okay, currently a Canon user will all the air glass uh, with all the air glass, and then um, but can't decide between the Mark III or the X. Right, Stuart, what sort of uh, what camera do you use on Canon? You know that I can kind of suggest for light for light, but then uh, I think just basic on based on the two. Uh, 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 selections that you 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 come up with the Mark uh, the M1 Mark III and the M1 X, I would possibly suggest you to use uh, the uh, M1 Mark III, not only because it's cheaper, uh, but it's more important is as capable as the X, minus the ultimate ultimate ruggedness and reliability. But if you need that for work, if you need the ultimate ruggedness, you will get the X. And uh, yeah, that, that would be my choice of working tool because uh, I need something reliable. That's why I have the X. But if you uh, are more of a enthusiast and uh, you do take it uh, on, 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 on uh, occasionally going on the very rough locations and things like that, in one three would be totally fine. It's as reliable, like I mentioned, the Mark II served me well for four years professionally in different uh, situations and different locations. So the Mark III would definitely perform. It also has better uh, facial tracking if you do portraits, for instance. So I guess, for me, maybe Mark III is slightly more flexible in that terms, and uh, uh, the X is is definitely more robust, and for sure. And uh, so you just have to wait out a little bit. But I guess the saving from getting the X, and then get the Mark III that you can actually use the extra money and get a better glass, or maybe get another lens. So that that is how I see it. If you want to switch from Canon to uh, to to Olympus, uh, because. You know how digital works, you know, after three or four years, you know, you, you if you shoot a lot, you might have to upgrade anyway. So you might as well take the Mark III now, it's brand new, it's fresh, and then uh, and then you can get it and enjoy it a little bit. And if you just uh, have an X Mark II come out in the future, you know, you then consider that as the next upgrade. So that's how I would uh, probably recommend. Um, Romeo also said about, yeah, Robin Wong does a lot of great videos to learning in one Mark II, uh, in one series, of course. He does a lot of great tutorials. I mean, he's a, he's a very techie guy, so uh, uh, he's, a, he's a friend of mine, and he's, of course, he's really good. He's a fantastic guy there, very enthusiastic about Olympus as well, and he knows a lot of stuff about uh, 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 the Olympus camera, because he used to work for Olympus, so, uh, I mean, technically, so he used to know the inside and out a lot a, about a lot of the features about Olympus, that's why he, he knows all the shortcuts and the, all, the, all the little uh, uh, customization that you can get from the camera, so he's actually a very knowledgeable Olympus guy. Uh, I'm on the other hand, I don't think I'm as technical as him, 
I'm just simply a photographer, filmmaker, and uses Olympus uh, for professionally, and that's what I am. I'm a content creator, so I just create things. And, uh, but I do review stuff, of course, you know, and uh, as you can see from this channel, I do review a lot of lenses, uh, other equipments, accessories, and lighting, uh, even wireless stuff, wireless transmitter, screens, uh, you name it. I review anything to do with the camera. So that's, that's what I do. But yeah, Robin is a cool guy. So is Peter Forsgaard, also my friend as well. I met, I met Pete, uh, Peter uh, in London when he came over earlier in the year. So we had a good fun time together. That was good. So that's cool. And uh, Roman talked about, of course, this is the essence of Michael Forsgaard, right? Portability, medium format for image quality, and the rest is useless. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you put it. The rest is useless. <laughs> I guess this is uh, a little bit of a right, uh, right, uh, right, right wing extremist. <laughs> okay, and uh, Fabian, hello, how are you? Every system offers something unique, and heck, every company offers something special. And hence, there is a space for them, and they will last, of course. And and frankly, you know, like I said uh, early in the video, and I sometimes do feel sad when people talk down. Uh, talk down other companies, like you know, whether in purpose or simply that they just prefer their own the, the brand that they support. And I, I don't I don't like that, you know. Like even though, let's say, I'm an ambassador for Olympus, I I love Olympus gear, so you can tell that I have all kinds of stuff here. But I never ever talk down other companies, you know. And I used Canon before, I used Leica before. I really don't talk down in terms of their innovations, their their technologies, their uh, uh, you know, because it's good to have all companies out there. You know, they're trying to innovate. They're trying to push each other in terms of in terms of advances. That's how we get improvements and evolutions in 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 the, in the equipments that we use. You know, if, if there is only one camera exists, there will be no improvement. You know, and or the improvement will be severely limited because they think they set the pace for everything. And I don't think that's the case. And I think it's good to have other companies out there to compete. They have new ideas from each uh, from each each, other, uh, each of the companies there, and uh, like Olympus, you know they're really good at with their computational photography. Uh, the stabilization is off the chart, and uh, obviously the sensors are really good. The lenses are really good, uh, you know. Like so is you know the Canon dual pixels uh, AF is fantastically good, you know, for videos and also still now for mirrorless market. The dynamic range is good, and the upcoming 8K video is going to be something like for Monster. You know, these are people who are pushing the envelope to. You know, further and further to advance uh, uh, the entire photographic and filmmaking world. So why not have everybody? You know, like I always hate the people that predicting this is gonna die in two years. That is, oh, you know, it's not doing too well. They're gonna they're gonna disappear in six months. Why say that sort of thing? You know, like I really don't like people doing that. And uh, uh, you know, is it really sad when? Well, I felt very sad when Minota folded you know eventually they became sony luckily so they kind of survived but then um, but the minota name disappeared because i used to be a minota minota lover even though i use canon and then uh, my brother uses uh, uh, minota cameras so uh, it's sad always sad to see a camera disappear you know like, especially one with a long history you know minota's been around for a long long time you know in the 60s 70s 80s there were really popular cameras there and and as soon as they they disappeared I really felt, you know, I really felt it, you know, it's not joking. And then nowadays, like Pentax and Ricoh, you know, they, they are kind of rocking a little bit at the bottom there. And uh, I really hope that they would do well, you know, and to survive, you know, whatever's coming in the next couple of years. Uh, Nikon also, you know, of course, they, they haven't really diverted their, their, their businesses enough to kind of survive the fluctuations in markets and uh, and also hope then, you know, to do well because Nikon is such a great company. They have a lot of great products, you know, the latest Z6 and Z7 actually prove that they can do it. But whether there will be enough people adapting the, the systems, another thing. And Panasonic, you know, and, uh, uh, they, you know, they, they are cool always in the video terms. They're really pushing the boundary in video capabilities. Uh, yeah, all the companies have the good stuff, right? So why, why cuss others? You know, why don't why don't you just appreciate what everybody else can do on the market and then and, uh, and live happily ever after? I don't mind a little bit of fight. A little fight is always good, right? It's just like husband and wife, yeah. Just a little bit is always okay. Not to the not to the time when you actually start chopping each other, and that's not good. So uh, I think it's it's okay to have a little bit of a push so that you can get advances uh, for us to enjoy, right? In the, in the future. Okay, and. Um,
Let's see, well, I'm curious about what you think about Olympus leaving. Oh, that's with I talked about this already, so that's okay. Um, right, Ira, hello. And um, I own an EPL one. Whoa, you have the very first one. And EP5, EMR Mark 1, and I had Pentax gear, still do, but I prefer the size of the Olympus gear. Pentax is good though, right? Yeah, we just talked about Pentax. Um, uh, in terms of ergonomic, in, for DSLR, Pentax actually very, very good. I love the, uh, the actual grip from the Pentax camera. They are fantastic for the hand, even though I have a smaller hand, but then it just feels good. Uh, like I mentioned about the, uh, the connections on the camera and the, and the photographer, I think everything comes together when you have a good grip, you know, it just feels good. It's somehow, you just, when you hold the camera, you do feel it. So yeah, that's cool. Well, thanks for sharing that. And um, Pen... <laughs> Lucy, uh, okay. The Pen F is way too expensive. If it was 600 US, uh, they would be overpriced. Uh, the EM10 Mark III is a vastly better camera. Well, that is depending on what you define as better camera, right? First of all, um, I mean, like I said, I respect your answers. Of course, you know, if you value uh, what uh, the M10 can offer, of course, yeah, that will be a better camera for you. But in terms of Pan F, like I mentioned, the craftsmanship is definitely different. The use of more exotic material to start with is fully aluminium, um, uh, so magnesium uh, body, top and bottom. The design itself is totally off the chart. Uh, how they engineer to uh, you know, the entire body, put them together without any screws is still beyond me. And secondly, sensor is 20 megapixels against 16 megapixels. So it's, the sensor alone is slightly different. I wouldn't say that, okay, that's a $600 difference for sensor alone, but when you add them together, you know, in uh, for, uh, let's say, the, the body materials, you know, the, the overall uh, 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 functionalities wise, you know, because the Pen F does have a lot of pro features that only existed in the EM5 and that's not um, in the EM10 Mark III, so uh, that's where the differences is. But yes, price should have come down, but, unfo uh, but unfortunately, nope, they never ever come down in, in terms of new price. The EM, uh, the Pen F is always a little bit more expensive to buy, uh, simply because it's probably more of a classic camera. So they price it accordingly. <laughs> um, okay, uh, the Hogatron. Kai Wong said Michael Fother was dead four years ago and he was on Digital Ref. <laughs> well, look, Kai Wong said it four, four years ago, then Tony and Chelsea said it two years ago and said it again last week. Actually, I think this week. And then uh, uh, many other people said it again. And uh, uh, I, like I mentioned, you know, you already heard what I said. I don't like to talk down to any other thing, any other platform, any other companies. Uh, if it does, it does. It's so, you know, so be it, you know, is, what, what are you going to do? Nothing. You know, I'm going to continue creating content. I'm going to continue working as a photographer. Nothing's going to change, right? And, uh, but at the moment, I'm enjoying everything. I'm enjoying uh, the gear that I use. You know, it brings me smile, brings me my income. That's what matters, right? And then uh, if you are a photographer, if a tool that gets you happiness, that is what it's all about. And uh, okay, no one is going to <laughs> buy a camera in this climate. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I think this is uh, something is going to be you know a common thing for twenty twenty, and I don't think Olympus is going to be the only company suffering in sales, but others as well. And, uh, they didn't expect anything actually this year, so uh, that's why the latest. Uh, uh, financial figures coming up from Japan for Olympus is they already put in a COVID-19 adjustment saying that they already reduced the sales quite significantly. They're still selling actually, apparently, and then uh, but just not at, uh, at the same level as last year, of course, you know, because people are not going out to the high street and, uh, and all kinds of situations uh, that that may have involved uh, about, you know, job securities and all the others, you know, so extra cash is, is a bit limited at this moment in time. So people may not want to spend that on the camera, for instance. These are luxury items, ultimately. So um, we shall see. Hopefully, market will rebound at some point, but I'm sure they will. It just takes time. Um, <laughs> Camille, COVID-19 uh, killed my all year. Well, it's killed my year already. And uh, even though I'm here, so gratefully, I'm thankfully for you guys that are still supporting me here. And uh, uh, this is really, uh, uh, you know, from the bottom of my heart, I really want to thank you guys personally. I'm not joking. I want to come out and enjoy some smile with you guys, have a drink, have a beer, have a pint, you know, just uh, talk about photography and, and, and gears all day long. That's what I want to do with all of you. Uh, but 
this year has really completely destroyed my business and uh, I virtually lost all my jobs this year and uh, that's why your support is greatly uh, really really uh, 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 appreciative you know and uh, yeah so uh, nothing I can say apart from that uh, I, I'm grateful that I'm still healthy and smiling <laughs> okay and then Julian and uh, you are thinking of buying a camera now Wow, okay, let me know what you're going to buy and uh, hopefully I'll give you some suggestions, you know, from all the things that I just talked about. Hopefully uh, i give you some guidance because all the cameras I just talked about today uh, are still on sale uh, on the camera, uh, so on the Olympus websites and also is still in the catalog as current camera. So you can still buy all of them. So that's cool. Um, Camille, oh, this is a following up from there. Eight projects and all cancelled. Yep, same as me. I have cancels, job. Projects, everything gone. This year all vanished. And uh, uh, well, my project is YouTube. That's why I'm here. <laughs> okay. Um, Rob Shifoto, Olympus Roadmap has possible prime lenses. Has some visionaries say, nah, uh, they would make a 1.4. What's my theory? Do they really need a Mark II version of the 1.2? Okay. Right. This is interesting. If you guys are into these sort of roadmap issues, uh, my personal take on this is that the Olympus may not need to make the Mark II version of the 1.2 so soon because they only just have them two to three years ago. So it's not actually that long ago. I know the 25 1.2 probably the oldest one, but having said that, it's still a very good performer. They won't upgrade it until they significantly update the, uh, the resolution of the sensors oh, until that point comes. You know, until they upgrade from the 20 megapixel to let's say 30 megapixels on the Michael Fourth sensor, they may need to rethink about uh, uh, doing all the lenses. Uh, the, as, at this moment in time, I don't see the need for it. And to save R&D, to push into other, uh, put the resources on other innovations and stuff like that, I think it's better just to, let's say, invent new lenses, for instance, new focal length, and also uh, uh, maybe completing the current F4 uh, uh, trios uh, and other other possible uh, uh, funky lenses they may come up with, like such as a ultra wide angle prime lens, in which I'm still waiting for it. And uh, if that happens, then that will be another thing that I will definitely be purchasing, like the 12 1.4, for instance. If they ever come out, that will be the lens I will get. Okay, uh, the, let's see. John Allen say the EM1 Mark II is great for video. Yes, it is. Great for video, and uh, it's in terms it's so good that is uh, is on par with uh, the E One X in some aspects. Apart from that, you can't change the focusing points once recording uh, in terms of autofocus. You have to uh, 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 select one point at a time. But on the E One Mark Three and the E One X, you can actually change the autofocus, the CAF point, live during recording. So that's why I love them so much. If you use uh, the autofocus or relying on autofocus a lot, the M1 X and the M1 Mark III would definitely be better. But in terms of the tracking speed and accuracy, the M1 Mark II is also very, very good. And, uh, it's definitely on par with the later cameras, but it's just significantly better compared to the, the pre-firmware 3.0 version. And uh, the pre 3.0 ver uh, pre versions of the M1 Mark II was great for photographs, but was never truly great for video for in terms of auto focusing performances but now it's definitely really really good okay um yes that's what i talked about already they are still supporting it and uh, right bernard you are suggesting something yeah for a while i'm just reading your comment out just to see if you make the right choice <laughs> Very good, yes, it is very good. Right, okay, let's see Victor, Victor Scorpion. Hello from Slovenia, hello. Uh, any idea on why the regional shop web pages are in maintenance for several months? Oh, I have no idea. Right, I would make a request for you and ask why that is. Is that still happening? If you let me know. And uh, I will check it for you, but I'm pretty sure the the uh, the shop dot Olympus dot EU is functioning, and uh, but I don't know why the uh, uh, the regional one has stopped. 
they may have actually consolidated into just one uh, uh, one main uh, main European website. So they they just simply ship to your country. I'm not entirely sure whether that is the case, but I I may ask the question why some European country local local regions are not supporting at the moment and or or just not functioning properly. So I I will ask the question for you, Victor. And Maris and. Uh, you have the EM10 Mark II, EM5 Mark II, EM1 Mark II. You're a happy camper. <laughs> well done. Well, you got you got the whole trio there. You know the, the all the Mark IIs there. That's excellent. So uh, you so you you definitely agree what I said about each of the cameras, right? You know, in terms of uh, differences and also like the advances from each uh, 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 better models, like the EM5 over the EM10, same as the EM1 over the EM5. Uh, they just great cameras. I think they're good. They're all good for certain things, right? Okay, and uh, let's see what other thing is. Uh, oh, everyone's trying to get a three hundred f four. You know that in the UK, if you're in the UK, that is, uh, the, I'm not entirely sure if the deal has passed already. Uh, you could get the uh, three hundred mil f four, and they throw in the uh, the two times converter, the MC twenty free of charge. So that thing alone costs about three hundred fifty quid. So it's actually a very expensive gift. If you're getting the 300 F4, so that that is something um, worthwhile considering. Um, I'm not sure if the deal still goes. Um, the, I know uh, Brad actually bought the 40 to 150, which actually got the uh, the MC14 thrown in, which is actually very very good. And uh, let's see. Sam is in new. Oh, I, I did. I thought you were in Hong Kong actually, <laughs> for some reason, and you're actually in South Wales, UK. Okay, wow. And uh, let's see what other comments here. Right, present price uh, for E1 Mark II and Mark III in China's are five hundred and. 1100 respectively wow that is a good price in china that is very very good price for china for even mark ii 500 pound wow that's half the price of what the people got here get in uk so if, if you guys want to get great imports from china you're probably better off buying china and ship it over to the uk you can still save significant money <laughs> 500 quid is actually cheap and uh, uh but obviously obviously when you do ship things from abroad and you're subject to duties and VAT uh, but even if you add them on I think you could still get cheaper than the UK the only thing you might lose is of course the the local warranties and anything uh, support uh, uh, support and like that so you yeah you have to be careful with the with you do great imports and uh, I did that before you know and I'm not discounting it I'm not disregarding it because sometimes you do save a lot of stuff save a lot of money and at the end of the day as a consumer right you know you just have to save your pocket then uh, you all the you know, all the leftover money you must well get a better glass. Always good, always good stuff. And one point two, one point two makes a lasting impression. <laughs> I think it's the number, right? You know, F one point two. Bulkalicious. That's what Kai used to say. And uh, okay. True that the new 58.9.95 is a manual focus and it would take more time to do the examining. <laughs> yep, it is. It's uh, definitely harder to do, uh, you know, in terms of image quality, you know, and uh, uh, for during manufacturing. It, these sort of lenses are really, really difficult, especially that sort of uh, aperture size. The shallow depth of view, you know, it, it's, it's truly uh, stunning how, you know, Accurate they need to do that's why a lot of these uh, ultra wide aperture lenses they need to be inspected by uh, By hand you know actually manually checking the lens whether it's sharp or not They just can't rely on a lot of the uh, the 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 automations like uh, The robots or uh, other they can't rely on tolerances. Let's put it that way. So uh, which a lot of lenses do apply so that's why Some people still say you know that if you're lucky you get a sharper lens than the others uh, It's still true because they're running out from the product production line not all the lenses are the same technically because they have a tolerance to play with depending on how tight the tolerance is sometimes you do get a slightly ever so slightly sharper lens however in micro four third in, i don't know if you know that you can actually do micro adjustments to to a lot of the lenses so if you do find your lenses just slightly off a little bit you can do micro adjustments and double check whether you do get the maximum level of sharpness from your lens so you can actually do that uh, uh, going to the menu and you can select micro uh, micro adjustment you can actually change all the uh, uh, figures there, which is actually pretty cool. 
Right. Oh, I need to scream, scroll down a little bit more now. And uh, Jimmy, remember the Belgian guy with the adapter and the Canon 85? The Belgian guy with the adapter and 85? No, I don't. I did use the 85 and adapter. I'm not entirely sure what you're referring to, but enlighten me. <laughs> um, can you talk about that gadget on top of my camera, Ivan? Yes, I can. Of course I can. Right, this little guy here is the Hollyland Mars 400S. It's a wireless transmitter, usually used for filming. Right, and uh, what they usually do is that uh, they, you know, in filming world, a lot of the time the director or the art directors want to see exactly what the cameraman sees, uh, the, which sometimes is, can be difficult because uh, the camera will run off the field. Well, the director or the art directors will be sitting on wherever they feel comfortable sitting. So, like, they could be a couple of hundred meters away. You know, for instance, I'm not as far as that. Sorry, maybe a couple of hundred. Uh, 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 sorry, I keep saying that, hundreds. A couple of a uh, couple of like 20, 20, 30 meters. Like what I'm talking about. So a distance away from the director, that director. So they can't see the cameraman or what they see on the screen. So they would need something like this. This is a wireless transmitter. So they will transmit the signal come from the camera and wirelessly transmit it to the monitor that they uh, that they hook up to the receiver. So um, then the art directors and director can actually see exactly what's going on live on the screen. So they can um, adjust if they see something that's not right. And then you can tell the cameraman, okay, next time if you go down that route, you have to bend left a little bit more, maybe turn the angle. Just It's all about uh, visualizations in the filming world. But because of the current issues on a lot of streaming world and the uh, streaming starting to appear in, you know, since the lockdown began, and uh, I realized another use of the wireless transmitters that I can actually use this to stream, to stream this to my, to my cam link. So I can actually use it as a wireless streaming device. So this is actually a pretty fantastic and practical solution I, that will enable me to move away from my camera if I want to do live stream. So I did that multiple times on my Facebook. If you follow, follow me, come onto my Facebook in the morning, you'll see me demonstrating using this a lot because uh, I do love it because I actually go outside, I can talk outside. I can even show you, for instance, let me go back to uh, uh, this, this camera thing here. So I can actually do this, something like this. I can completely uh, do this uh, live, totally away from my, from my camera. So there's no link attached. You can see like this is actually very, very smooth. And this is my cup of coffee. You can see it's black coffee here. And then, uh, so this is something that you can do completely wireless. So there's no wire here. It's all through the, the, uh, the transmitter here going straight into the receiver, which I hooked up here to my computer. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. And the range is very, very amazing as well. And uh, because being a pro equipment, you can get up to, in line of sight, you can get up to 100 meters uh, a range into the wireless transmission. So it's actually very fantastic. If you haven't heard about this or you want to learn more about it, I will put the link in the description so you can see Hollyland 400S, that's what it is. And uh, you can buy it as a kit for uh, one receiver and one transmitter, or you can get you can get extra transmitter itself because a receiver can receive up to two transmitters. So you can have two cameras rolling at the same time wirelessly. So that is pretty cool. Okay, and... Um, Okay, um, <laughs> Camille, my girlfriend loved this camera more than me. <laughs> really? Really? <laughs> I, I wouldn't say that. You can't say that in front of her. You can't really say that. Okay. Well, I thought Olympus was a bit expensive when the G9 went down to 999, but now the EM1 Mark II is uh, at one, 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 uh, 1200. There are features that G9 just doesn't have and feels just about in the right price. I think so. I actually do think so. And then um, they recently lowered the price to a level that I think that is very competitive uh, in terms of features. Like you said, there are a lot of features that in terms of photographic features that Olympus just way more advanced compared to Panasonic cameras. And once again, I have to rave about Olympus color science. Olympus definitely better and more natural and more true to life for skin tones. And I do much prefer the Olympus color signs and then they are just great out of the camera. You don't have to do, do too much to it. That means you can work with your file straight away. Larry Chang and hello. And uh, Panaf has an amazing JPEG output because of the color profile and the mono is good. I think the mono is exceptionally good. Right, and I'm gonna scroll through a little bit quicker. And then, uh, hello, slow, slow band um, from Belgrade. Mm, 
Cool stuff. Hello, how are you? Um, nobody does street photography with big lenses. Try to say that. Try to say the same thing to the full frame boys. <laughs> I'm just joking. Like I said, I don't want to talk about other people. I don't want to talk about or talk negative about other people. Um, hello, Adrian Corden. Good afternoon. I have a TG5. Absolutely brilliant, especially using for monochrome work. Well, wow, actually, interesting. Incidentally, Darren Mill, uh, Darren Miles. Uh, in Florida has done an interesting video about the pen F should have. Yes, I heard that and uh, I saw that as well. Uh, I did talk about it just earlier about the pen F and uh, I don't think they, they it's, it was a missed opportunity. I don't think so. At the time, they were limited by technologies and they're for sure. Pricing, yes, a little bit on the pricey side, but judging from what they actually did for the assembly of the body and the design of the body, I can totally forgive that because it's just a work of art on its own. Um, of course, you know, four years on, you can say that it's completely outdated with like still contrast detect AF for that price. And uh, that is why I think um, the Darren kind of made those points out. And uh, yeah, you, you can't really look at the a 2015 slash 2016 camera compare to any of the offerings in 2020. You really can't. But like I mentioned again and again, I think in, photographically, the pen is more than enough, way more than enough for any photographer's need. So uh, it's still a great photographic cameras just not on the video size. Okay, Sammy, hello. Uh, if you're from, <laughs> if you're from Denmark, buy your camera in Sweden much cheaper. Oh, is it really much cheaper? I'm not entirely sure. Wow, really? John Allen say 4K is overrated. <laughs> <laughs> that really depends. I do like shooting 4K to be honest. It does look sharper, uh, you know, even if you downscale it down to 1080, I, th I still think it looks sharper and more detailed compared to 1080 output. Um, uh, right, okay, I'm going to start scrolling for a little bit quicker because I think it's almost time for me to start uh, preparing for my uh, 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 evening, especially in, uh, um, if you don't know, I have two seven-year-old here, so, so that, that means dinner time is very, it's approaching fast. So that means I have to wrap up fairly quickly. So let me just answer a couple of more questions and then I will have to say goodbye and then hopefully I'll see you guys next time. So let's see if I miss anything cool here. Someone say 40 to 152 pointer is the best. I agree. It's really a cool lens. I love that lens a lot, really a lot. And um, well, and they actually replies that they're saying that the it is expensive. It is expensive, but don't forget this is a pro lens, fully weather seal, and it has a reach of equivalent of three hundred millimeters at two point eight. That is really really good. Try to get a three hundred millimeter two point eight lens on a full frame. That would cost you a kidney just to get that lens. So that is for sure. Oh, Vicky, you are here. Hello, Vicky. <laughs> Vicky in the house. <laughs> oh, and uh, let's see. Fairly quickly. Hello, Udo. Hello. And uh, great stuff. Wow, lots of you guys. I missed so many comments. Sorry, I have to, I have to skim, skim through that now. Hello from Eric from Hong Kong. Hello there. Hello, and uh, all right, one direct question here. George Bacon, um, how does the autofocus compare between the EM5 Mark III and the EM1 Mark II with all firmware updates? I've heard the EM5 Mark III is better, but I'm trying to confirm this. Uh, no, it's the same. It's, it's basically the same in terms of AF performance between the two. Uh, in effect, it has exactly the same guts as the M1 Mark II. Um, uh, so I don't see any difference whatsoever. Apart from the form factor, it's just half the size and lighter than the M1 Mark II. Uh, everything is pretty much the same. Um, people who, who kind of originally thinking about the M5 Mark III uh, was a bit of a, uh, you know, a knockoff, you know, just, uh, you know, it's a, yeah, a shrunk version of the M1 Mark II while getting a three-year-old camera. I don't think that's the case because of the firmware update on the M1 Mark Two that made it as good as as it is, but don't forget that you know like um, uh, they could easily don't give you the update firmware for uh, so a firmware update on the M1 Mark II and just simply just give you an M5 Mark III that performs better than the M1 Mark II. They could, but they don't. They just give it to you. But now who 
the EM5 Mark III is slightly cheaper than the EM1 Mark II, but it giving you smaller form factor. So if you treasure portabilities like I do for traveling and vloggings, uh, definitely is a better option. But in terms of performance, I think it's very equal. However, you have to understand the EM1 Mark II does have a lot more stuff as well, like Duke, uh, like Duke Car Slot, proper uh, bo uh, metal bodies, and also um, uh, 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 like faster bur uh, burst rates, and sorry, not faster, I mean like bigger buffer for more pictures to be captured at any one time if you use a lot of burst shooting. Um, so yeah, it's still a little bit better in terms of spec wise if you compare like for like, but if in terms of AF, um, they are the same. So let's see, one last question. Okay, here we go. And, uh, Christopher Dean, and in terms of astrophotography, how much cleaner with an image between the EM1 Mark III and the EM1 Mark II? Very, very similar. I don't think that you, you see much differences there, um, if, especially if you shoot in RAW. Uh, there are definitely not, not much difference there, even though that the, uh, the EM1 Mark Three has the TruePic 9 processor, which is the brand new processor, there, which is much, much more powerful than the Mark II. Uh, it's just a cleaner image, it's about the same. However, the E1 Mark III does have Starry Sky AF, which is a fantastic AF specific tailor for uh, sky shooting at nighttime. So uh, that may help a lot of photography out, a photographer out, especially who wonder who do astrophotography a lot. So, right. There we go, there we go, hopefully. Okay, I'm gonna reach the end now. And, uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> Thank you, Victor, for your super chat. Um, um, okay, cool stuff. I think I am reaching the end now. Um, sorry, I know you guys sent me a lot of messages, but as time approaching dinner time, so I will have to end it very, very soon. I will have to read all this comment later on. Hopefully I will answer them. If I didn't answer your questions, and if you do have anything significant or very important, you can leave me a message on the video and I'll reply you directly, or you can pri uh, uh, private message me on Facebook, Instagram, anywhere you want. Uh, don't forget that I have other social media platforms to follow me. Just search my name, Jimmy Chang. You will find me very, very easily um, the, on the internet. So uh, uh, that's all good. Uh, so excellent stuff. Um, thank you guys for joining me and I really, really do appreciate all your support and coming into my live stream. And of course, I thank you for all the uh, support that you have given me, either through Super Chat or through my Buy Me Coffee link, which is right, 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 right here. Yep, right here. And uh, yeah, you can always buy me coffee as you wish. Um, uh, no obligations here. I'm just here to happy sharing my knowledge and sharing my, uh, uh, my time with you guys because I totally love these sort of sessions and I'm totally engaging with you guys uh, with all the uh, passions that you have shown me on not only in Olympus products, but in terms of photography in general and filmmaking, is this is something that I truly appreciate and treasure for life. Um, uh, thank you for all your support, and yeah, I, I really cannot say more thank you than, than that. It uh, is, is something that I, every time I see so many of you come online, and it uh, just makes my smile. That's why I'm, I have so much energy, even though I have two seven euros that drive me nuts, but then I, <laughs> I'm still here just uh, happily smiling and then doing all kinds of stuff for you guys. So stay tuned for my videos though, and uh, I am trying to get back to my normal routine and producing content. And, uh, as, uh, I know it's a difficult time for everybody, but stay healthy and then uh, be sure that you follow the government guidance and uh, I'm hoping all of you have a uh, happy weekend uh, coming up and also a healthy weekend or healthy life in general. And uh, yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna end my stream today now. And uh, once again, I wanna say thank you just because I cannot say more than that. I see how so many of you guys leave me messages and uh, it's just a very happy thing to see. So cool. So like I said, if you have any more problems, any more questions, you would ask me, direct message me. You can follow me on my Facebook, Jimmy Chang 23 that's my username. And then you can follow, follow me on Instagram and, and Jimmy Chang Photography. Uh, also, Red 35 Photography, if you haven't already followed my Instagram, so it's all there. Um, you can message me, of course, anything else um, that, that you would like to ask me about anything about photography in general, not just Olympus. But of course, if you have any Olympus query that you want to ask me, you can also welcome semi directly so uh, stay tuned for my other contents coming up and uh, if you want to join me i have a daily live stream on facebook every morning in london of course and uh, 11 to 11 30 so you can join me have a another chat if you want to catch up with me so there you go i shall end my vlog right here 
Have a good day, guys. See you later. Bye for now.